Simon Parkin. BBC Radio Somerset. So it's 18 minutes past one. It's a lovely sunny Thursday afternoon. Now, close your eyes and uh, have a think. What, what does this conjure up in your mind when you hear it? So, just to reiterate, you're not listening to Classic FM or Radio 3. Uh, this is BBC Radio Somerset. But there you heard Mozart's Eine Kleine Nacht music, uh, Bach's Toccata, uh, William Tell Overture by Rossini, Beethoven's Symphony No. 5 in C minor, and the Overture from The Marriage of Figaro by Mozart. What did you think? Did you think, yeah, classical music, when's he going to get another Queen song on? Get a bit of take that on. Or did you think, oh, I love classical music. That's that's what I need to relax me and chill me out. Did you think, well, it's not for me. Uh, it's for, you know, it's for, for posh people who've got lots of money. Well, here's the thing. Uh, whatever you thought about classical music, we've got a man who is going to tell us everything we need to know about the fact that it's, it's for everyone and there are so many interesting stories, particularly the ones about the composers. Pianist and conductor Robert Emery uh, is here to change our minds about the stuffiness of classical music. He's got a new TV show. It's called Classical Connections and he's here with us now. Hello, Robert. Good afternoon, Simon. How are you doing? Really good, thank you. And it's lovely to have you here. And what a brilliant idea for a TV show because I can remember when I was much younger when the the last night of the proms was coming on. I always think, oh, 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 it's that classical music that I don't quite understand. (laughs) But um, when did you embrace classical music? Oh, when I was about seven years old, I started playing the piano. So, you know, I, I've been at it, you know, almost my life, really. And, uh, and, and I love it. And the, the thing about classical music is it's, it's everywhere. All, all modern pop music, all modern rock music is made up from the original classical chords that were created by the classical masters. Um, it all stems from that music. And, and, and you, me and everybody else listening will know classical music and will listen to it almost on a daily basis without even knowing it. If you listen to any advert on television, it's probably got some classical music on in the background. Whenever you fly with British Airways, they're playing the, the flower duet from Lakme. If you go to the Alton Towers theme park, then you hear um, a piece called uh, Pierre Gint um, by, by a composer called Grieg. Um, and it's all around us and we just don't realise it. And even amazing music by brilliant film composers like Hans Zimmer and John Williams that people know and love today. It's all stemmed from Bach and Beethoven and and all of those grand masters. And I just, I I love it. And I just want to share it with people and just say it doesn't have to be stuffy. I'm I'm a bloke from Birmingham who grew up with classical music. And you, you don't need to be a multimillionaire to enjoy it. And, um, and, and that's what Classical Connections is all about. Well, in the first show, you mentioned there Grieg and Edvard Grieg is the, the star of the first episode. And you explain so well, we've got a clip here, where you explain so well about how much we know without knowing we know it. What connects a green plastic frog to a drain pipe through classical music? Edvard Hagerup Grieg. Grieg is probably the most famous composer that you know that you don't realise you know. For instance... (laughs) 
from that morning to this. And you can't help but think of Morecambe and Wise when you get to this bit, of course. But, um, yeah, yeah, of course. The, what I love as well, and the clip there reminding us that we do know these tunes, of course we do, but the the fact that every show has a, a slightly random start point where you are connecting uh, a frog and a drain yeah. pipe in this case. So what a lovely bit of research you must have done. And a lot of it revolves around the lives of the composers. It does. Yeah, I was down the pub one day and I was having a bit of an argument with a pal of mine. Uh, this is way before the idea of COVID was even a thing in, in life. And um, and I was trying to explain to him, do you know what? Classical music is everywhere. It's all around us. It's, 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 it's something which is easily accessible if you'll only open your mind and your ears a bit to it. And he, he was disagreeing with me like crazy. And I just said, look, give me two random things. Uh, and I proved to you that I can connect these two random things through the world of classical music. And he actually gave me um, orange juice and, uh, and clothes or a costume or something. And he said, I had to try and connect orange juice and clothing through to, to uh, classical music. And um, so I went away and did some research and I did it. There's a guy called Berlioz. Um, he's an amazing composer. He's a bit of a nutter. He fell in love with a woman called Marie, uh, but Marie's mother was a bit snotty and said, you're not marrying my daughter unless you go and win a world famous competition. Anyway, it took him four times to try and win this competition. And on the fourth time, he won it. Ta-da, brilliant news. He went back and said, Marie, will you marry me? And she said, I'm sorry. I'm already married to somebody else now. You were too slow. And he got so frustrated and so angry he decided that he would concoct this amazing ruse of dressing up in a French maid's outfit, going into the house of Marie and pretending to be this French maid, getting out his gun, shooting Marie, the love of his life, shooting her new husband, shooting Marie's mother, and then finally doing the dastardly deed upon himself. And he got on a train and the only thing he had was orange juice. He didn't have any food and he had to change somewhere on, on the train. So he changed into this French maid's outfit. Um, the train stopped. He got off, looked out to sea because it was by the seaside. And because he'd only had the orange juice to drink, he promptly fainted and fell into the sea. Whereby a passing, I mean, you couldn't make this up. It sounds like an episode of EastEnders. A, a passing boat came and fished him out of the sea. And uh, and then he sort of came to and I thought, what am I doing here? I'm trying to end my life here because of the the, the love of my life has left me um, whilst dress, dressed up as a French maid. Now, nah, let's forget it. And so he got back on the train and went back home. And, and that was the end of that. And so, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, these stories are incredible. And so all I do in this in this classical connection series is try and tell the stories. It's a three minute episode. They're tiny. Um, and it's me playing the piano a little bit, a beautiful old 1906 Steinway. When and that's that's classical connections. And it, it is lovely the way that you weave in the, the bits of music with these these incredible stories. And um, the I mean, your own story is, is quite fascinating. You've worked all over the world and with some of the biggest stars we could ever imagine. Yeah, I've, I've been a lucky boy. I can tell you that, you know, I, as I said, I grew up in Birmingham and, and you know, it was all written in the stars for me, really. I mean, I, I went to London for the first time ever when I was 11 years old and I went to see a show at the uh, London Palladium Theatre called Joseph. And as an 11 year old kid, I got the programme and I circled the name of the conductor and I said, this is this is what I want to do when I grow older. I want to conduct, I want to make music. And you, you wouldn't believe it. I, I got a place at the Royal College of Music when I was 18, moved to London, moved to the big city. And literally the first uh, week there, I met the bloke who I'd circled in this program. He became the dearest of friends and is since the godfather of my child. And he really kicked me off in the right direction with my career and gave me my first big break. And, and I've never looked back since. And, and it was all written in the stars from that 11 year old boy circling, circling that face and that program. It's, I've just I've been incredibly lucky. You said when you discovered classical music, you were about seven. W your friends presumably would have been listening to more contemporary stuff. Did, were you doing that as well? And, and what did they think of you saying, ah, oh, yeah, but listen to this bit of Beethoven? Yeah, but exactly. Variety is the spice of life. 
And, you know, one of the biggest projects I've been doing for the past four years is working on, on the Bad Out of Hell musical uh, worldwide with, with Meatloaf. Um, uh, so, and, and Jim Steinman, who wrote all those amazing songs, bless him, he passed away on Monday. Um, you know, his first love of life was Wagner. Um, and you can't get more big and bombastic in classical music than, than Wagner. And, and that is proof and evidence. You know, if you, if you love Meatloaf and if you love the Bad Out of Hell albums, it's the biggest selling rock album of all time. The reason why it was made is because the writer loved Wagner. So without all of this amazing classical music, you wouldn't have your meatloaf and you wouldn't have Take That and you wouldn't have uh, Taylor Swift or whoever it may be that you love listening to. Um, so, it, you know, it all stems from that. And it's really good to know that. Well, also, what's lovely is that the people that you were working with, you mentioned their meatloaf and Jim Simon, whilst we can see the classical influence, you don't think of them as classical. So you've got Stuart Copeland from The Police, who you've worked with. Um, obviously, Russell Watson, you've done a lot of work with, who we do know of as being a, a classical singer. But it, it's sort of it's merging the styles, isn't it? And that, I guess, is how it works best for all of us. Yeah, and that's how music develops, of course. Um, you know, you know mu music used to be a very, classical music used to be a very formulaic, formal um, structure. You'd, you'd go and sit in a music parlour and you'd sit with a straight back and enjoy music. Um, and, and, and since then, you know, we've moved away from that. Thank goodness. Um, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't mean that we can't still enjoy that music, though. Uh, and so music evolves. That's the whole point in it. Um, and just this morning, I was uh, I, I was creating a new piece of music based upon um, the Vivaldi Four Seasons. And I'm, I'm twisting it around and I'm throwing in some electric guitars and all sorts of things for, for an artist who I'm producing an album with next year. And, you know, th th that's... That really is what music is about. It's about pushing the boundaries, loving the music that is there, finding out what connects us and, and making it all happen. And, and you know, m music is a source of, of solace for so many people, especially at the moment when we've been in this horrible lockdown. And the amount of people who I've been speaking to have said, music has been the thing that has kept them going. Um, and, and, you know, musicians have had a torrid time over the whole of this, this period. I mean, I haven't earned any money from my music industry um, for, for 13 months now. Um, and I'm not the only one. There's a lot of musicians who are out of work. Um, so it's, it's really important that we, we, we keep the energy going and we keep the idea of loving all this music and, and that you, the general public, support us. So why are you getting bookings now? Is the, is the world beginning to open up or is it still a bit too soon for that? <laughs> Um, I, I've got some tentative dates for the back end of this year. Um, I had all my 2020 work cancelled all and, and up until now all my 2021 work cancelled and half of my 2022 work has been cancelled as well. Um, and, and, you know, the big thing is it's social distancing. Yeah. Producers can't afford to put on a, a gig, a, a concert, a piece of theatre, whatever it is. They can't afford to do it if, if the audience has to be social distance because the break even point is about 70% when you're putting on these shows. And if you're social distancing and you've only got 40% of your house full, you're going to lose money. So that's the big thing. We need to make sure that we get, get rid of this social distancing when it's safe to do so. And then we need the confidence of the general public to go back into the venues and buy the tickets. And because believe, believe you and me, you know, we are so ready to, to perform for the public again. We, we can't wait to get back out there. When I have been lucky enough to be in the audience, of, it's the same in theatre shows as well as when I've been in an actual concert venue, the, the tuning up before it all starts and then the silence. I love that moment. When you're there, baton in hand, what, what's it like for you? Well, at that point, I'm standing at the side of the stage waiting for their orchestra to, to, to do the stuff. And to be honest with you, I, you know, I don't really get nervous. I've been doing this since I was so young. One second, you're having a cup of tea in a dressing room, just chilling. And then all of a sudden, you're in front of two and a half thousand people or 20,000 people performing. And, and you, you've got to be able to switch that on. So one of the techniques I do is this just jumping around. And um, But I love it. I mean performing there's nothing like it in this world and, and I, if I could do it every single day in my life I would do and we all miss it terribly that we've not been able to do it well uh, well I hope you're doing it again soon and in the meantime we we've got the the tv digital tv series classical connections to see us through uh, some r really lovely just clever links between the most random of things and and hearing some music that, that is familiar to us as well um really nice to meet you today thank you so much for your time Thanks, Simon. It's Simon Parkin. Beep, beep.
Radio Somerset.